How you doing? I'm Tyson Franklin. And as I mentioned in the previous video that I was doing two videos. So it depends which order you're actually watching them in. The other video was called uh, Don't Make Any Changes for Six Months. This one is titled Identifying Out-of-Date Processes. Now, how this came about, let me tell you a short story. And before I get to the short story, if you're enjoying these videos, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss any. Back to the story. A few weeks ago, my daughter, we have an apartment and the modem at the apartment was not working. This is where my daughter lives. And so she contacts me and says, oh, our modem isn't working. And I said, okay. And I went through the usual things that a parent do. Is it plugged in? Is it turned on? And she said, yes. And I said, what lights are on the back? So because you have green lights for good and orange or red lights, which are bad. She said, there's no lights. I went, okay, try a different PowerPoint. Different PowerPoint, no lights. So I said, bring it over here. So we brought it over to my place. I tried a different power connector thinking maybe it was just the, the cord. No lights, not a problem. Okay, we've identified the modem is shit. It's not working. It's crap. It, it's died. So we go to the Telstra store and we walk in. We said, uh, well, first, you have to make an appointment at the Telstra store because they are understaffed. Big cross there for... Telstra, the head office, have, don't have enough staff in their store. The staff members, though, the team members there are bloody brilliant. They are fantastic. We'll always look after you. So it's not a fault on them. It's a fault on the company and the way that their processes are. So we go in there and the lady said, you've got to make an appointment. And we said, okay, this is pretty urgent. So she fit us in, which was fantastic. We talked to a guy who said, yeah, your modem buggered. He said, it's no good at all. We need to get a new modem. Now, this is the frustrating part. In their store, sitting on the shelf, is a new modem. They've got a number of them there. I could give him my old one. He could give me a new one. I could go out to the apartment that day, hook it up, and everything would be great. But no, no, that's not how the processes are. He had to log a fault. So he, he did it for me. He went online, logged the fault for me. And he said, now we need to talk to somebody at the Telstra head office. So we ring through the Telstra head office. We go through that, lays on the phone, I go through the same thing, tell her everything. And I said, look, I'm looking at a modem right in front of you. I can just give him the old one. You can give me the new one. I can go, we'll all be happy. And she said, oh, no, we can't do that. What, if you take that new one, you've got to pay for it. I said, well, why do I have to pay for it? I've got this one from here, it doesn't work. I just want to exchange it. No, no, what you've got to do is we've log logged the fault, which is great. What will happen is we will post a new modem out to you in about three to five working days. They're going, okay, there's one right here. I can't take that. I'll go, wait now, three to five days before I can actually get my modem. So no internet for three to five days. That's what you tell me. She said, well, well, we'll do it as fast as we can. And it was good. It did arrive in the three days. But the thing is, we weren't home. So it, there was a, a thing in the letterbox to say, you've got to go to now go to the post office and go and pick it up. So then we go to the post office. We pick up the modem. We bring it home. We install it all. That is fantastic. It's all, it's all work. Oh, there's no instructions in the box here. Luckily, I know what I'm doing when it comes to installing things, so that wasn't a problem. But if it was left to my daughter to install this by herself, she would have no idea what to do because it's not just plug it in at work. You plug it in and you've got to wait 45 minutes for everything to connect. In the meantime, you think everything's wrong. You have something wrong with it and you want to ring Telstra again. And I'm saying, no, we're not ringing Telstra. It will work. So it did work. I go, okay, I've got this old modem. Now what am I supposed to do with this? There was no note in the box. There was no instructions. I'm thinking, do I throw it in the bin? Nobody told me what to do. I thought, I'm going to hang on to it. I'll throw it away in a week. Anyway, I take it home that night. I get an email the next day. Uh, we see that you've hooked up the new modem. We're going to send you an email with instructions on returning the old modem. Okay. And now I can't take the old modem back to the old the Telstra shop where I bought the first modem. So now I know this story is, is going on a little bit and I, and I apologize, but I get the email. It says, now you have to print out the slip, print out the slip. We want you to put the old modem into a box. Luckily we kept the old box. So I, I was aware of this. So I kept it all there. Now you need to take it back to the post office with this. And then they'll give you a receipt to say that you've actually sent it back. So we did that. Had to go to the post office again. So not only could I, I not just pick up the modem from the shop right there and then, and even the staff members again, this is the dumbest shit they've ever seen. They said they are so out of date with, with, with contact with their actual customers that they're doing all this really old school way of doing things. And this is what I was talking about. 
is checking your processes. Are some of the things that you're currently doing out of date? Are you making people wait or just have to jump through these certain hoops when the whole process could be sped up so much more? I relate this to fitting orthotics. Every patient should be asked, do you want to pay the extra and get the orthotics here quicker, especially if they're in pain? Or you should just add whatever the, the, the fee is to have them made faster. Just add that to the price of the orthotics and, and just tell them our orthotics are done in two days, not two weeks. Anyway, that's one example of processes of things that can actually be improved in podiatry. You need to sit down, look at your business, talk to your team again. What can we change to make it a better experience for our patients? Or are we just going to continue to be a pain in the ass and annoy them until another podiatrist comes along and opens up a better business, looks after them better, has better, faster processes, doesn't make them wait, and you're going to lose patients. Back to my story. So go to the post office, drop it off. They give me a receipt. Okay, okay. My wife said, what are we supposed to do with this receipt? Throw it away. I said, I don't know. I'm not sure. What. Let's hang on to it because I don't know what they're going to do. Now, since then, we received three text messages and five emails telling me that, yes, we uh, it's been registered. It's on our way back. We'll keep you informed when, it, when we receive it. I don't give a shit when they receive it. I've got the new modem. modem. I don't care but since then now i've had to answer three text messages delete five emails and thinking oh my god will you please just improve your system i bought the modem from your store the modem broke i want to take the modem back give me a replacement modem and let me get on with my life you deal with the store on how you want things to go backwards and forwards that would be a much better client experience for me so the essence of this video, the point of this video is make sure you're reviewing your systems on a regular basis and try and improve things, especially speed and efficiency. The way things are these days, and especially with younger people coming through, they, they're just used to things being done efficiently and fast. So if you're not trying to improve the way that you're doing things, whether it's how, how appointments made, getting an appointment. If I rang a place, a business, and I have to wait a week to get an appointment or two weeks to get an appointment, and I know for some podiatrists, they'll put like a bloody badge on their chest and say, oh, I'm booked out a month ahead. Well, that, that tells me you have a very inefficient business because there's other podiatrists out there who are struggling to get patients. So why, why are you making people wait a month when you could be looking at the type of patients you have, the ones that you don't really enjoy doing, is maybe push them off to the podiatrists who aren't as busy and let them see them so that you can fit more of the better patients in. That's just another idea. Like I said, there's tons of things that you can actually do. I know this video has gone on, long, gone on a bit, but I just think it's really, really important is to review your processes and try and improve speed, try and improve efficiency, and don't be like Telstra. Maybe that's the title of this, this video. Don't be like Telstra. Okay, hope you get something from it. Love your feedback. Send me an email, tf at tysonfranklin.com. Go and check out my website, TysonFranklin.com. That's where I have events and different things that are coming up. And if you're enjoying these videos, like I said, click subscribe button and you won't miss one. Then again, after watching this, you might go, I never want to watch another one. It's up to you. Okay. Look after yourself and I'll talk to you later. Bye.